You know, I don't know how many sheets of paper I've used to print drone regulations over the past four months. I tell you, it's probably been enough. So, hey everyone, how's it going? Hope you're having a great day. So nothing fancy today with this video. I'm just going to talk to you guys. No fancy B-roll or graphics or anything like that. I just want to discuss real briefly some recent developments when it comes to drone regulation. So right now it is currently illegal to fly a drone at night or to fly directly over people unless you've been granted a waiver by the FAA. Those rules could change soon with a new proposal that was just put out by the Secretary of Transportation. Now, should we be excited about these new rules? Well, yes and no, but let's check it out. Hey, thanks for stopping by the channel. This is 51 Drones and my name is Russ. If you enjoy what you see today, be sure to click on the subscribe button as well as the notification bell. Also, if I give you anything of value, be sure to click on that thumbs up button. So recently, the Secretary of Transportation, her name is Elaine Chow, released a proposal that would govern the use of unmanned aircraft systems when it comes to flying at night as well as flying over people. Of course, this is very exciting news because right now, as a commercial pilot with a Part 107 certificate, you must apply for a waiver from the FAA to be able to do both of those things. This is a very tedious and a very lengthy process due to a tremendous bottleneck at the agency. Just for daytime waivers alone, there are over 3,500 still waiting to be approved, and many of them were submitted over a year ago. So now, should we be excited for these proposed new rules? Well, it depends on who you ask. As a recreational pilot, not really. With the rules proposed as they are right now, nothing will change for recreational flights. But for Part 107, yes, this is very exciting. Of course, one of the reasons for all of this is to pave the way for the big companies like Amazon and others to begin drone delivery services. But it all provides tremendous potential for all sectors of commercial drone flights. These proposed rules would open up a whole new industry for anyone wanting to get into flying drones for the purpose of making money. And it removes much of the bureaucracy that is currently required. And it's also going to open up avenues for many other industries like farming, fish and wildlife management, emergency management, and things like that. So let me summarize these 200 pages. You know, it's nothing like the government to overstate something. <laughs> because of these 200 pages, most of the important info is in about the first 30 pages. After that, it's just the history of the regulations, safety definitions, compliance, explanation of kinetic energy, and benefit to cost ratio to these proposals. So if you read the first 30 pages, you're getting the gist of the whole deal. Now, first of all, with the proposed rules, you will still require a Part 107 remote pilot certificate. These rules do not apply to recreational pilots or flights. Secondly, to be able to fly at night, you would be required to complete a knowledge testing and or training, including new subject matter related to operating at night. So if you already have your Part 107, there would be additional training and or testing that you would have to go through to be able to fly at night. And then future Part 107 exams would include the new training and testing. Also regarding night flying, you would require to have anti-collision lighting that would be visible for at least three statute miles. Not nautical miles, but statute miles, which is what we all know as a mile. Now regarding flights over people, first of all, a Part 107 remote pilot certificate would still be required. And it's divided into three categories, and it's not based on weight, but it's based on risk to human life. So category one would apply to any drone that's under 0.55 pounds. So that one is by weight. And the rules there are you have complete freedom to fly over people. There's no restrictions for any drone that's under 0.55 pounds. Now category two is not just based on weight. It's based on how much injury the drone would cause if it were to strike someone. If your drone were to fall from the sky and it hits someone, it would need to result in the same amount of harm as getting hit with 11 foot pounds of force from a rigid object. Now what is 11 foot pounds of force exactly? I don't know for sure, but if you do know, please comment below. I'm thinking it might be something similar to getting punched in the shoulder by your buddy. But to give you guys an idea, a 95 mile per hour pitch from a baseball has 87 foot pounds of kinetic energy. The proposal would leave it up to the manufacturer to design their drones in a way to stay under that 11 foot pounds of force. In no way does it tell the manufacturers how to get there. 
It just tells them what the end result must be. And I must say, I really approve of this because it encourages innovation without excessive regulation. Secondly, for category two, the aircraft must not have any exposed rotating parts that could lacerate or cut skin. So as it's worded right now, this eliminates all but a handful of existing drones. So what I'm wondering is, will our Mavic Pros and our Phantom series or whatever we have be grandfathered into this? It's hard to say. Also, I'm wondering if the FAA will accept aftermarket accessories for compliance, it's like something as simple as prop guards. That's something that remains to be seen. Thirdly, and this is pretty obvious, but the drone being operated over people must not have any FAA identified safety defects. And to that one, I say, duh. <laughs> and then next is category three, which is the same as category two, but the threshold of injury is raised to 25 foot pounds of force. But what they do for category three is they limit exposure to people through compliance to operational limitations. For instance, drones falling under this category would be prohibited from flying over an open air assembly, like an outdoor concert or something like that. The flight must be within a closed or restricted access area. And if anyone enters that area, they must be well informed that there will be a drone flying above them. And lastly, if it's not flown in a closed or restricted area, it may transit may go over, but not hover over the people below. And it would still require no exposed rotating parts that could lacerate. Oh, and it must not demonstrate any safety defects once again. Now this proposal also includes three additional waiver options. You would be able to apply for a waiver to fly over moving vehicles, which you can't do right now. You could fly over people with requirements that aren't covered under these new proposed rules. And finally, you can apply for a waiver to be able to fly at night without anti-collision lights. And then a couple of other miscellaneous inclusions in this proposal. As a remote pilot certificate holder, you would now be required to show your certificate to any enforcement agent when requested, including federal, state, and local authorities. Now, at first, I was not a big fan of this. I was very wary of this. But then when I thought about it, I'm like, well, you have to show your driver's license if a police officer pulls you over, right? Well, this is much the same. Now, the issue that I have with this is if you're flying and you're approached by the local police officer, will they have the knowledge to understand that you need to be able to land your aircraft before they engage you? I would hope that there would include some education at all levels, especially local law enforcement. So what's going to happen with all these proposals? Well, the secretary has given 60 days for the public to input. These proposals will soon be posted on the federal register, which is where you will get all the information on how to voice your opinion. I'll put a link for the federal register below. And also, as soon as these proposals are on there, I will link those specifically. Also, I've made contact with someone that I think you will all find very interesting. I'll be doing an interview with the executive director of the Northern Plains UAS test site. North Dakota is one of the leaders in paving the way for commercial drone technology. And we are one of the states that's been granted authorization by the FAA to conduct beyond visual line of sight test flights. So this gentleman I'm going to talk to, his name is Nicholas Flom. He is the man running the show. So I'm so excited to ask him some questions and inform all of you on what's going on in the development of this industry. I'm gonna link their website down in the description so you can check it out and also be sure to watch for that interview coming soon. So some very exciting yet challenging times are ahead for all of us, both hobbyists and commercial pilots. My opinion ultimately is this is a step in the right direction. However, the one thing that no one is talking about right here is the hot button topic and that is privacy. The general public will view this as yet another way for the government to keep an eye on them, as well as allowing anyone with a drone to invade their space. We, as responsible drone pilots, as well as our leaders, really need to find a way to educate. Yes, this is the future and there needs to be regulation for growth, but let's face it, there are 300 million stakeholders in this game and I hope they aren't forgotten about. So thanks for watching today, you guys. Be sure to subscribe to keep up with all of this. Hit that thumbs up if I've given you anything of value. As always, fly safe and fly smart.